You're listening to JTE Movie Thinks. Is that is that the title? Is that is that correct grammar? All right, we'll go with it. It's a show about movies and thinking. And now here's your host, Every Man's Hero, JTE. Hey guys, what is going on? JT back again with another episode of JT Movie Thinks. Back at it again, people. I watch so many movies, and so do the people I have on, so that's why we're here. We're here to talk movies, and this week I have the one, the only, the man who was nice enough to let me on uh, Jedi Alliance, which Ken only did once, <laughs> so you're already talking with Ken, uh, yeah. Mr. Joseph Scrimshaw. Thanks for having me, JT. Great. First of all, let's get this straight out of the gate. Yeah. I, just moments ago, I said Scrimshaw sounds like a tool. Yes. Like, I feel like if I was in a, if I went to a Home Depot right now, and I went to one of the employees and said, what aisle would I find a scrimshaw? There would only be a scrimshaw in the aisle if my comedy career goes to crap, and okay. I have to work at Home Depot. That's the only way you're going to find a scrimshaw tool in the aisle. But this is a testament to the people who work at Home Depot. They would yeah. probably actually go look for one. Oh, yeah. I'm sure they, they would assume. <laughs> like, a scrimshaw? I oh, believe yeah, it's aisle. it's like see? a hammer that has two hammers on it, right? It's a no. hammer with a saw at the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a it's basically just designed to murder your own hand. That's what a scrimshaw tool is. But I'm just surprised I'm the first person to make even that a sight. Yeah, you know, I grew up in the Midwest where there are a lot of like Schroders and Schraders or whatever, so people would try to stick an H oh. into my name, so I got oh, a lot okay. of scrimshaw, and it's it's hmm. exactly it's spelled exactly as it's pronounced. It's scrimshaw, S C R I M S H A W. It's not a mystery, but I grew up with thinking like, man, I have a really complex name. Yeah, it's funny because. <laughs> You have basically kind of taken over for a bit for Ken Napsok. Yep. <laughs> the two hosts of Jedi Alliance, both their last names could easily be a Star Wars name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Napsok Scrimshaw. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, Mark Donica is co-hosting. <laughs> he's got a he's got a good yeah, name for it too. Star Wars name like Bounty Hunter Scrimshaw. <laughs> <laughs> Must find Han Solo or Napsok. <laughs> I just feel like they're Star Wars names. Napsok just beat Dengar up. <laughs> there you go. See, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So I just think it's funny how that works out. Uh, Tapia, not very Star Wars-y. That's my last name. <laughs> oh, that's your name, Tapia? Yeah, Tapia. What kind of jokes do you get? Do you, My mind goes to the pudding. <sighs> yes, I got a lot of yeah. tapioca pudding growing up. Yeah, hilarious. Um, that was basically ta- the fish, tilapia. Uh, okay, that seems like a lot of work. <laughs> that seems like a really big fish geek. It's like, hey, you know what you are? You're yeah, a tilapia. tilapia. <laughs> Uh, so that was about it. No, it wasn't too bad, mostly. It's funny because growing up, like Josh, I always felt like such a normal name. Yeah. Ninety percent of the people would call me by my last name. Okay. Like growing up, like yeah, I'm JTE now. Yeah. <laughs> but everyone growing up would be like Tapia, Tap. And that's weird to get to know all you guys in the Schmo community because yeah. you guys all have nicknames or your last names. Yeah. Yeah, and I was hanging out with Ken and, yeah. and meeting a lot of you guys, uh-huh. and you guys would all be like. Hi, I'm Phil. And then somebody else would walk in and go, What's up, corn dog? <laughs> Whatever various Is that nickname. his nickname, corn dog? No, no. I'm, the, neither of those <laughs> yeah, things yeah. were accurate. But yeah. everybody was introducing uh, themselves to me as their like normal human names. That's hilarious. And then clearly in the schmo community, you guys yeah. have it's your like, nicknames and your last names. I'm the pit boss. I'm the copster. Yeah. I'm ace. Yeah. <laughs> I'm up on Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> crazy. Uh, yeah, it's funny how the nicknames work. They're not none of us picked our nicknames. Yes, they were assigned. I would <laughs> they imagine. They were basically yeah. assigned. That's how all that's great. Cool. That's how all great nicknames work. Yeah, they should. You shouldn't self pick a nickname. Totally agree. If it if mine was, if you could self pick a nickname, what would yours be? Oh, if I could self pick one. Uh-huh. Uh, well, when I was a kid, I wanted to be Leo because that oh, sounded like a cooler DiCaprio? name. No, uh, this was Leo from Twin Peaks. I just thought you were a huge Titanic badass. fan. Okay. No, I'm not, I'm not big on the old Titanic. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's fine. It's a fine yeah. movie for what it is. No, I, I don't know. I'd have to think about it. I had two nicknames that, were again, weren't given to me. The only one I made up was Silky J. It <laughs> okay. Was, <it> was my... <laughs> I would veto that for myself. <laughs> it was my rap name, okay, Silky J. Uh, but a lot of people, one of my bosses called me J-Tap. Oh, that's and not that, bad. That stuck around for a long time. You know what I would like? I would like my nickname to be, like, just... Come on! Come so on? So it sounds like people are upset about something whenever <laughs> yeah. they're talking to me. Like, this is my friend. Come on! Uh, I have a friend who's in the porn industry. His nickname is Come On. But that's a totally different thing. Um, <laughs> also a fish. Yeah. The come on, fish. <laughs> All right. So this is your first time on the show. So let me yep. break it down to you. Even break though I know down. you're a huge listener of the podcast. So you already <laughs> no need for this. Um, this show, I basically bring people on from the entertainment industry, whether it be comedians or just movie geeks in general. Or just a friend of mine. I have my cousin on here. He sees like, you know, a few movies here. Um, what is the last movie you watched? 
whether it be something you had to watch, let's say you're on a plane. Right. And you watch it from beginning to end. Maybe you're on Netflix and you come across a movie you heard about, but have you yet to see? Yeah. Or maybe it's just one of those movies you love watching and it's on your shelf and you say, you know what, I'm going to dust this off. It's time to watch this again. Uh, the only thing I ask is that it's not something you had to watch. Right. Whether it be like a screening or you had to review something. Right. Which a lot of people on the show are, are critics. <laughs> yes. So I literally had to make that up for a lot of people. <laughs> I bet. Uh, so Joseph Scrimshaw. Yes. What was the last movie you watched from beginning to end? Well, I'm, I'm happy with this because not knowing I was going to be on the podcast this week, uh, I yes. watched Wolf of Wall Street on Netflix. Oh, snap. Yeah. I love Wolf of Wall Street. I thought that you would. Holy shit. Okay, this is great. Um, first of all, first time watching it? Yes. What happened? What do you mean? <laughs> Why did you not see this in theaters? So, see, I'm a weird uh, obsessive geek where okay. I am I narrow down on things. Mm-hmm. And it's like I love movies, but that means I will watch like I've watched Hot Fuzz probably 18 times. Okay. Uh, but I've seen like World's End once. So okay. I liked it fine. Okay. But I get obsessed and watch movies a lot. But I watch them again and again. Gotcha. So I, I'm not the kind of guy who goes out and sees every single movie. So I'm kind of a weirdo that way. So when you saw the trailers for this thing, it didn't really pique your interest, is what you're saying? Yeah. I, I mean, I knew that it would be good because uh-huh. I like Scorsese. It's Scor- and it that's, it's looked Scor- like it had that sort of um, Goodfellas yeah. DNA yes, that it was yes. going to be that arc of story. So it's like, I'm excited for that. <laughs> uh, but right now, like, I'm going to every geek, every pop culture movie. Like, yeah. I go because I'm a comedian yeah. who does a lot of pop culture stuff. Uh-huh. I love those movies. And even when there's a movie that I'm like, eh, I kind of want to know what's going on. So I I don't always uh, make time to go to just sort of, like, really good Scorsese type movies. Yeah, you know, they're, totally not, they're not in the theater as often. Uh, and also, I'm married, so we make decisions together <laughs> about what we go to see. I figured your wife would be all be like, bring me to a Leo DiCaprio movie. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think she's got a big, not Leo, a big Leo thing. Uh, no, and she's not She's not like that where she's like, oh, man. Uh, oh, okay. I talked her into seeing John Wick, uh, the spur of the moment. Oh, okay. I really, John Wick was, was awesome. getting great reviews. It looked really cool. Yeah. I like Keanu Reeves when he's we, cast to be Keanu Reeves. We just covered this Reeves. movie with John Roca a few weeks ago. Yeah, it's a great, great mm-hmm. movie. Um, so, okay. So, well, so sometimes we go to a movie like Surprise like that. Yeah, uh, okay. Like, Things that are great fly under my radar. That's just my deal. As a movie geek and film enthusiast, Scorsese's on. I'm seeing anything Scorsese. Yes, you're seeing I it mean, opening weekend. Yeah, opening front row. weekend. Uh, I'm gonna see it, even if it's not a good movie. You know, I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Uh, and again, like you said, when I saw trailers, it did have that feeling of Goodfellas, Casino. Like it had that kind of feel, and there was a curiosity to me. Curiosity to me is, can he do that again? Yeah. Because when someone hasn't done a movie like that in so long. And, you know, maybe his last two movies didn't do great. I mean, they did fine. Hugo and uh, Shutter Island, I both enjoyed both those movies. Yeah, but I couldn't tell but... you what Shutter Island is about other than <laughs> Leo DiCaprio's face is on it, right? <laughs> Go- and okay. there might be an island. So you never saw it? No. Okay. It's a good gothic kind of psychological thriller, which, again, some people like, some people don't. I enjoyed it. But this was, like, literally... I wanted to see if he could go back to that Goodfellas yeah. casino style. Because, you know, when these directors get older, you're just not sure, but... He proved I should have known better because he proved to me that he could still do it. Yeah, just like George Miller did it this past year. Yeah, you're like, did he lose anything? Did he miss a step? And then he comes nope. out Fury Road. You're like, these guys can still freaking. I think there's do it. something about like just getting back to your roots, exactly, where you, where you feel totally at home and like mm-hmm. you really feel comfortable to take risks because yeah. you're you're starting from such a comfortable place. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we watched it because we had uh, a Netflix. night off, which is rare for. For my wife and I to both have a like oh, a night where okay. like there's nothing, there's no distractions. We could we really just uh-huh. want to be taken out of the world. Yes. And I love all the pop culture stuff. I love yeah. Star Wars. I love you know uh-huh. everything Marvel's putting out. I love Mad Max. But it had been a, a, a while since we had watched like something that's grounded in reality <laughs> and is just like this movie is in auteur vision <laughs> yeah. too, where you feel like you know I'm a big fan of David Lynch. Oh, I like really? people who that is their movie and there's mm-hmm. no mistaking it anywhere. Exactly. You are taken by the hand into mm-hmm. their world, and it's nobody else's world. Totally and good. I was totally in the mood for that, mm-hmm. uh, and Sarah was too, my wife. Yeah, so three-hour movie. Yep. Uh, it's not a short movie. Nope. But, and I said this when it came out, and Christian Harloff said the same thing, I could have watched another hour. Yeah. I was entertained from beginning to end. Yeah. Uh, this was my number one film of the year that came out. In 2014, in 2014. right? 2000, was it 2013? End it of 2013? La- was it last year or was it the year before? Okay, so yeah. So yeah, it was 2014. No, 2013. So end of 2013. Yes, end of 2013. 2013. Yeah. Okay, yeah. 2013, it was my number one film of the year. My number two was Her, I believe. Cool. Because I loved Her also. Uh, but this, again, I was just entertained from beginning to end. DiCaprio gave him one of his better performances I think he's done in a long time. Yeah. 
Uh, so give me your overall, just what were your overall thoughts on the film once you finished it? And give me your wife's thoughts because I'm really <laughs> curious. Uh, she really liked it. Uh, she sometimes takes a little bit longer to process. It's it's mm-hmm. a fun part of the relationship where like I'm kind of used to being the opinionated guy, so I already, already have like I have a liberal okay. arts degree, degree, so I'm always like, <laughs> what were the themes? What were the supporting pillars of the idea of the concept? Mm-hmm. And and she lets things sit, you know, and just really yeah. lets them marinate. Okay. Uh, so we talked a little bit about it. She really loved it, um, and I did too. I think what I really really liked about it is it had that. Goodfellas DNA mm-hmm. of the the party guy who you can tell is going to a place where he is not going to have any choice but to betray all of his relationships and his own sort of self identity mm-hmm. in order to just keep functioning. Very Henry Hill. Yep. yep. <laughs> and it has a little bit of that sort of uh, you know when you like behind the music where that sort of like you're going to get that inevitable part where it all falls apart and they mm-hmm. need to reinvent and how do they reinvent. Mm-hmm. So it had all of that. But then within that, I think it had this very fascinating sort of shift in who you were rooting for and why. Okay, so again, I think we're definitely going to get some spoilers for Wolf Wall Street. We're not going to get... I mean, there's not really too much you could spoil. It's real life. I, yeah, I can keep I can keep yeah. these thoughts not, not yeah. too spoilery. I totally um, agree. I mean, the, the character you're with for most of the movie is Leonardo DiCaprio. Yes, really uh, intensely with. For a yes. three-hour movie, I saw somebody benching on... I like reading the Wikipedia uh-huh. uh, entries of movies yeah. right after I watch them. to get kind of <laughs> okay. like, if it's been a little while, like yeah. you get a little sense of like, what was yeah, the overall... Course. Was it a difficult movie to make? Yeah. What did people think? And there was one reviewer who was saying like, how can a three-hour movie be that narrowly focused on like two to three people? And that was one of the things I thought was great about it. No, you I barely totally leave the main character. And, and this is going back to Casino and some of these art movies. They're not the most likable people, especially in this case. No. DiCaprio's character is kind of a, he's a scumbag, you know, who does everything to excess. He is an absolute he, scumbag. He, yeah. He, yeah, he completely gives into his you know, his desires and his yeah. selfishness. Um and you let's let's give the main cast here. You got Jonah Hill. Yep. He's his best is kind of his friend he meets happens to become business with him. Uh, and who else is the who would you say is the other main character besides I guess Margot Robbie is, I won't even call her a main yeah, character yeah I mean she's got some solid screen she time does have uh, solid Joanna screen. Lumley has mm-hmm. a role um, but yeah. everybody is really reacting to those two um, I yeah. guess maybe the other perspective uh-huh. is uh, from Coach Eric Taylor from Friday Night yeah, Lights Kyle Chandler <laughs> Kyle Chandler but, but he doesn't uh, come into the film until almost what halfway uh, halfway through but yeah. he carries I think the other perspective and he mm-hmm. carries a lot of the, the conflict like the legitimate plot conflict as opposed to sort of the internal conflict I, I kind of agree with you I think he's put in there to give you like um, it's almost not like his side of the I, I, how you're saying like to give you his side of the view it's almost to show you almost more how despicable Leo is in a way. <laughs> I think it, that's what I'm talking about. The twist he, is it, you don't really it, get to know him. Yeah, you, and it shocks you that the yeah. scene with uh, where we really spend a lot of time with uh, Kyle Chandler is on the boat, the boat scene. Yes, the boat scene. I love that scene. And I think that's the moment where you where you shift. And like yeah. to me, it's not like you know I'm happily married. I'm not at the point in my life where like cocaine and endless sex strangely <laughs> yeah. sounds like a lot of work <laughs> it's not i don't i don't i'm not like oh, i wish i was lying to people about yeah about the stock market and banging hookers and yeah. doing blow like but what i think that what those actions capture mm-hmm. is a group of people led by this charismatic guy who just like all of the rules of the world don't apply to them don't apply to and them. i think no matter who you are that feeling of how can I get to a place where I can just do what I want mm-hmm. and get away with absolutely anything and the rules don't apply to me? Mm-hmm. And I think it's it's this dark comedy where you know, of course, the world is going to catch up with you. But it's so fun to watch these people have no restrictions. And then, bam, yes. halfway through the movie, great, powerful force of yeah. nature that Kyle Chandler is to play everybody's dad. Yeah. It's like, okay. by the way... Uh-huh. You don't have free reign to do yeah. anything, and I know you think you do, and I know you think you're really smart, but in this, in that scene, our main character, Jordan, yeah. uh, Leo DiCaprio, is a bumbling idiot, and suddenly you're reminded that no one can just have everything yeah. the way they want. Yeah, it's very interesting. It's funny because there's not a real. He doesn't really get his comeuppance. <laughs> like, no. I'm not going to tell you exactly what happens to Leo's character in the end, but it's not like, you know, it's not a sad ending, really. I mean, yeah, there's some things happen in his life that you know he probably wish he could have avoided but at the end of the day he's i don't think he really learned his lesson 
Yeah, and that's the other thing I love. And I don't think this is a spoiler really because it's the pretty mm-hmm. much the first scene of Matthew McConaughey. Yes, McConaughey. Has a great, great, in the cameo. great, amazing speech. Mm-hmm kind of about the nature of Wall Street yep. that stocks are kind of just made up BS. They're just magic, yeah. but we all buy it. And if you keep selling it, you'll get rich off of these fools. And I think starting the film that way, it not only informs Jordan's mm-hmm. character, it also sort of, uh, to me, starts a tone of what the movie is about, of like, all of this is awful. Jordan's breaking actual Wall Street rules. Mm-hmm. But even if he wasn't, this is a scam that the Wall Street... Wall Street as it is. Stocks yeah, are yeah. a scam that we all allow. Mm-hmm. And then we as a culture say tisk tisk to these rules being broken. But also just it it's money hungry people in suits trying to take as much from us as possible. Yeah. And that's when they're doing it legally. Mm-hmm. And now we're gonna watch a movie about doing it illegally. So even though you're watching a scumbag mm-hmm. who is doing illegal things, that speech sort of sets it up to this is what, you know, when the 1950s dad with the pipe and his slippers on gets out the newspaper and America was right and good, mm. this was the fucking bullshit he was reading about. <laughs> yeah, you're totally right. I mean, you broke it down really well. Jeez. <laughs> I need to go rewatch this movie now. <laughs> I, can I just, like, hire you to sit there and watch it with me? And, like, oh, absolutely. <laughs> almost like a scrimshaw commentary. Oh, oh, sure. <laughs> or we could just do it over the phone, probably. <laughs> yeah. And then a lot of it will just be, and that part was really funny, and that part was really funny. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry, I should have asked, can I swear on your podcast? Oh, of course. Okay, good, yeah. sorry. Whew. Fuck yeah. Um, yeah, man, it's funny because you get so caught up in entertainment in this movie that sometimes you don't really look with that much of a critical eye. Yeah. And I agree with you. Everything you said was spot on. But when I did I get that in my first viewing? I got to be honest, no. I'm just like <laughs> having such a good time watching people being despicable people and getting away with it. Yeah. I mean, this movie has so many entertaining moments. Yes. Where it's the scene where he tries to get to his car because he's dead yep. expired and, quaaludes and, yeah and he's got the, and the great twist yeah. on it um, and uh just some of these scenes are just you shouldn't be laughing yeah. at times you're like that's not right but god damn that's funny <laughs> yeah and i think it is it's a really really good black comedy in that way a dark yes, comedy definitely. and i think that's the reason that it, it's weird to me it should feel long because a yes. lot of it is vignettes. That's yes, that's what people were. A saying lot of it is out. just like vignettes, and you can see how he, how he would have a four hour cut, and how mm-hmm. he could only cut it down to three. He's like, I can't. Yeah. You know, <laughs> as a comedian, I've put together a lot of sketch shows, and it's mm-hmm. it's it's like a sketch show where it's like I can't cut any of these sketches because mm-hmm. they're all super funny. They're all super funny. Yeah. You know, and oh, this one's a little less funny, but it tells us something. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, yeah, I, I love it. Um. So you watched the whole thing one sitting. I was. Yeah. Um. Well, besides, like, did you agree when a lot of people were saying Leo should have been nominated? I mean, he lost McConaughey. It was the McConaughey that year. Yeah. And I totally get it. Cause and I, I am happy for that just for his speech. Yeah, amazing speech. <laughs> and I do think he did an amazing. Did you see Dallas Buyers Club? I have not. Okay, well, so he's go really good in it. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you feel bad for Leo. This guy's been, like, so many great movies. And for some reason, he just can't win an Oscar. Yeah, and, and I think and such great a... sense of direction with his partnership with Scorsese yes. and the yes. other things that he picks. He's a mm-hmm. guy who, like, got that sort of, you know, fame from something like Titanic, which, yeah. whatever you think about it, is certainly... It's I hard think to... it's a great movie. I think it's a great movie. I think it's hard to argue that, it, you know, at the time, it was a very, very schmaltzy, heartstring-pulling with of a course. super, super... A uh, handsome young guy. Yep. He could have just floundered. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think it's it's cool to see a guy who's passionate and knows what he wants. Yeah, I love so that like, he works with the best directors. Right. So he and he know and he wanted to do this movie, and I mm-hmm. think that comes across of like mm-hmm. I want to push myself oh. far. It's not like I kind of yeah. signed on to this movie because I guess that Scorsese guy is good, and then you want yeah. me to do what? I don't think it's totally him wanting to do it, and that gives it power. I don't think Leo knows how to like sleepwalk through a movie or not give a hundred and ten percent. There's movies like listen, I've seen De Niro do some movies where it's like he's taking a paycheck. Yeah, I even I mean, even McConaughey did it back when he was just doing these romantic comedies. They just do it for the money, or you can tell they're not really that invested into the material. I feel like every time Leo does a movie, he literally wants to be something that he looks at back of his filmography and is proud of. Yes, I don't think he ever wants to make a movie just to be like oh. I'll try this, see how it goes. You know, this is a good paycheck. I feel like every time he signs off for a project, immediately my interest goes up. Yeah. Because I know this guy is not just some, he's not going to just do any movie. Yeah. He's going to do something that could be award worthy or at least makes him do something different or pushes it. That's why yeah. he should have gotten nominated, in my opinion, for Django. Yeah. I thought he was great as a supporting actor in that movie. And 
Yeah, so I it's just Yeah, I think I love, he absolutely should have got yeah. nominated. Um I think one of the amazing things about his acting job and just the way the story is told in Scorsese's direction with the character is it would have been easy to try to go deep mm-hmm. and have like a vignette halfway through that really shows how he's thinking about it. Uh-huh. But I like the simplicity and the honesty that we see. His parents are kind of lax. His parents are involved. Yeah, yeah. They don't They don't really care. They were accountants. Yeah, he, his dad knows he's playing yeah. a lot. And then, you know, his first day on uh-huh. Wall Street, Matthew McConaughey is basically like, hey, the name of this game is fuck them all and take it for yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and he just runs with it. And I like the simplicity of, like, he found that success and there was nothing to challenge him. Mm-hmm. And that's a, it's cool to see a portrait of a relatively simple person mm-hmm. who is supported on all sides to do crappy yeah. things. And then, well, of course, there yeah. wouldn't be anything to stop him until we get that Kyle Chandler voice and uh, starting to push back. And then we get to see a little bit of depth. Yes. But he's he's only so deep of a character, and that's the truth of him. I totally agree. Like, you, you, some people are saying, like, oh, you wanted a scene where he shows a little more depth. I don't think that depth's there. Just like you said, I think he's literally what that, you see yeah. is what you get. That car scene is as deep yeah. as it gets. We <laughs> yeah. see everything he cares about in that whole car scene. I mean, I think one of the most dramatic or gut-wrenching scenes is the scene where he fights with Margot Robbie when she threatens to take the kid away. Yeah. And he actually hits her in the stomach. Like, yeah. he gives her a slap and he gives her a punch. And that was like the only time in the movie where I remember the theater kind of went silent for a second. Yeah. They were like, ooh, ooh, this is getting a little too real. But I'm not surprised that character did it either. No, not at all. He, he's a person who has not been yes. challenged, and then he does get challenged, and mm-hmm. then by the end, he, he's getting to that point of desperation. Mm-hmm. And I think they portrayed him as, you know, honest that, you know, he would do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know it does it does put you back on your heels when you're sort of like okay I've kind of forgotten that this is a real story and this is yeah. <laughs> a real yeah, life guy like, oh, who did shit. some horrible stuff yeah. uh, and I'm enjoying the dark comedy of this uh, and, but I think that's great and I think that's classic Scorsese of you know I'm, portraits of charming awful people now Scorsese and uh, DiCaprio have gotten together for a few films now yeah um, Gangs of New York I believe was the first one yeah uh, then you have I believe Departed Shutter Island and Wolf of Wall Street. Yes, those are the four. If I'm uh, missing, am I missing one? Uh, the Aviator didn't. Was Scorsese yes, the Aviator? aviator. Yes, because that's the only other one I've seen. Okay, I, I know about, I'm very very bad. Really? Okay. Yeah, I haven't seen Gangs of New York. I was about but to the ask Aviator. You, I really enjoyed. Yes, the Aviator is the one I forgot about. Uh, best Picture nominee. Uh, also nominated for Best Actor in that one. <laughs> I was going to ask you out of those five films, which one do you like the most? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've well, I'm, a, seen I'm a monster. Uh, <laughs> as you can see, I get obsessed, but I don't. Yeah. I, I'm not a completist about uh, movies. Which uh, maybe I should change. That's tough because I think out of those five films, I, I, I'm one of those people who don't think that The Party should have won Best Picture. Okay. I think part of it is because I do love the. It's a remake of a Hong Kong film. Okay. Called Infernal Affairs, which I, I'm sorry, but when I went and saw The Part, I just couldn't get that movie, the original, out of my head. And I like to think that I'm <laughs> mature enough where I could separate the two. Yeah. And the one thing I said coming out of The Part, even though I did, I liked the original better, I thought DiCaprio was great in it. Yeah, more so than Damon or anyone else in the movie, even Jack Nicholson. I thought DiCaprio was one of the first times where I was like, "Holy crap!" Yeah, he killed it. When I read the Wikipedia of uh, Wolf of Wall Street, it yeah. said that Brad Pitt had wanted it, and oh, really? I like Brad Pitt, but yeah. I literally went, "Huh!" <laughs> like that noise literally yeah. came out of my mind. And that's not even an attack on Brad Pitt; it's just how much DiCaprio. Leo DiCaprio owned that role in that character. Exactly, uh, and I think there's something about him that he that, that you know he's aging clearly. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a moment where my wife was like, "Holy crap, he looks like Jack Nicholson." <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's, there's a moment he's getting yeah. older, but he still has that youth, yes. and that makes sense for this character mm-hmm. who is chasing youth and doesn't want to grow up. Yeah, so I'm trying to think. So The Aviator is one of those movies I saw when it first came out. It was a nominee, and yeah. it, it's a good movie. I really I, enjoyed I need, it. I need to revisit it. I feel like it's been a few years since I've seen it, so that's yeah. one of those I really need to revisit. Uh, Gangs New York is a movie on paper that should be amazing, and I think it's a very good movie, but it fails. It's weird. It's where the only time DiCaprio is going to be completely outshined is when he's teamed up with Daniel Day-Lewis. Yeah. That guy just murders. Yes. <laughs> he's a scene stealer. He acts everything. Yeah. It's, real it, hard, real good. A real. It's like when you know everyone thinks they're on an all-star game, they think they're an all-star. Then Jordan walks on a the court. They're like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, <laughs> he's the actual all-star. He's, yeah, he's the actual all-star. So, like... Well, I think that movie's not great. Oh, Ken's calling me. <laughs> <laughs> Nabsack. I'm going to... doing I'm, battle I'm, with I'm, Dengar. Hey, Ken. I'm uh, in the middle of a recording for a JT <laughs> movie. Thanks. Can I call you back? <laughs> no. 
All right. Uh, Scrimshaw says hi. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. So that was Ken calling me. Yeah. Uh, what were his thoughts on Wolf of Wall Street? He just told me. <laughs> he just asked me if he could borrow my copy of Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, awesome. <laughs> That's all he was calling me for. <laughs> I said, of course, Ken. Um, I'm not even, I'm not going to edit that out, everybody. This is real life. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Ken are a very <laughs> working relationship, and I'm on call 24-7. <laughs> so I'll call him back. Um, so where was I? Uh, you oh, were... Gangs of New York. Yeah. Good movie. I don't think it lived up to potential. I think that was... Okay. I was ready for that movie to be the second coming of cinema. Yeah. And it just wasn't. And I think people... There's great things about it. It doesn't come together as a yeah. whole. Shirt Island is a great... is a nice little thriller. But it's nowhere near the other films I've mentioned so far. Yeah. And then The Departed, I told you how I feel about that one. Am I missing one? Uh, yeah, the, so The Aviator, you feel is just like, yeah. eh, it's fine. Aviator, I need to revisit. Yeah, I really like The Aviator. I think it gets, mm -hmm. there's a, sort of an element of distraction because it touches on all these kind of big sort of cultural milestones. Mm -hmm. So there were moments where I kind of got taken out of the sort of the film of it okay. because I was like, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. that's how this guy connects to this cultural yes. thing and that cultural thing. So it, it was, it's like watching the best Wikipedia article ever <laughs> because you <laughs> get in a little distracted by like, oh, hey, I want to go look that thing up. And so I'm going to say, when I look back all these films, Wolf of Wall Street is my favorite Leo Scorsese film. I think so. And it angers me that Departed, I feel like Departed won Best Picture as a like, we need to give this guy a goddamn Oscar before he like <laughs> dies or something. Because this guy's made so many amazing films. Like, I love Taxi Driver. I love yeah. Raging Bull. I love Last Temptation of Christ. I love, um, I, I name it, Goodfellas. Yeah. I mean, Goodfellas yeah, is one of my favorite he's movies. He's just made so many amazing movies. I love King King of uh, the King of New York, the one with uh, De Niro where he's a stand. Oh comedian. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I love that film. The King too. of Comedy. King of Comedy. Yes, yeah. Sorry, King of New York. That's, <laughs> that's Christopher Walken movie. <laughs> King of Comedy is great. Yeah, King of yeah. Comedy is great. So like, I felt like Depart was a catch up Oscar for him. Okay. Again, there's people out there that love that movie, so. I totally understand if you do. Just for me, give me that same cast in an original Scorsese film. Yeah. And I would have been happier. Well, maybe you'll get that. Maybe we'll get Do you it know what he's working on next? Uh, he's working on a film, I believe, with Christian Bale. Um, it's something about priest in uh, Japan or something like All that. All right. Or in another country. It's Yeah, it's a very personal film for him that I've heard about. It's a, I think it was a period piece also. It takes place back when the Catholic Christians were first going into Asia or something Oh, wow, like that. okay. Yeah, very interesting. I'm, so, I yeah. might be wrong on some of the details there, but that's his next film, I believe, which yeah, I'm so really Yeah, so definitely excited. Departure. Yeah, definitely Departure. Um, so, yeah, so do you have a favorite Scorsese film? Let's just go overall Scorsese. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I love a lot of his, you know, seminal stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, I, I really like Goodfellas. Goodfellas, so Goodfellas is very, is very powerful. Me. I, and I think that's one of the reasons I liked Wolf of Wall Street so much because I think it, felt like that. it had and it has that arc of the inescapable. Okay. Like yeah. when, you, when you're watching the early scenes, mm -hmm. you just can't possibly imagine that the main character will do the things that he, he is going to do mm -hmm. by the end of the film in True. both films. Yes. And it is, I think there's something powerful about that of like, you decide early on mm -hmm. who you want to be in life, who your friends are, mm -hmm. what you stand for, and then just the world works on you. Yeah, and even though you, even though these characters in these movies are in these fantastic situations, I think that's true of people of any kind where you're just like, this is how I'm going to be. This is the way it is. And then to watch just the world erode people is powerful and <laughs> yeah. fun and interesting. Ah, so interesting. Well, my mind. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's funny because, like, again, Goodfellas is, to me, like, you know, we say this in Casino Art, like, his, going back to that Goodfellas, yeah. kind of stable. Goodfellas, to me, is probably the better film overall. Yeah. I think De Niro is absolutely Depeche. You know, you feel a little bit of that in this movie, too. Like, Jonah Hill, I feel like if it was 20 years ago, Pesci would have played that role, right? Oh, yeah, It yeah. would have been Pesci and De Niro playing these yeah. roles. <laughs> and uh, it's so funny when you just see kind of like that, you know, this... DiCaprio is Scorsese's new De Niro. Yeah. <laughs> he had De Niro back in the 80s, early 90s. Yeah. Now he has DiCaprio. And now he's too busy doing rom-coms. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think, uh, let's talk about Jonah Hill for a second. Do you think he deserved his Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actor? You know, I this think. this was his second, by the way. Moneyball being his first. His first, his second nomination? His second nomination is Wall Street. His first nomination was for Moneyball. Did you see Moneyball? I did not see Moneyball. Okay, never mind. Yeah. So I can't compare the two. <laughs> yeah, you can't But I do it. feel like a little bit it is that sort of politics of like. Which, which pisses me off of 
a comedian can act. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, this yeah. is long baggage I, I have is a, is a comedian that it, I think he did gives an amazing performance and mm-hmm. I think it was right to cast a comedian in that role because he makes the dark comedy work true yeah um, I, so I think he deserves a nomination but I feel like in the politics of of it it, mm-hmm. it annoys me whenever it's like wow yeah. a comedian can act like yeah it's most comedians can act I understand and he first got nominated for Moneyball which that one I had a little trouble buying that nomination. Like I was kind of like I think it plays more to what you just and, said. So that one was more. That the, one was the, more that oh, the comedian shock. could actually be a yeah. you know, actor. This one I would much if you had asked me which one would I nominate, I'd give this one way over Moneyball. Yeah, Moneyball. He was almost kind of playing himself in a way, and he was just he it was very. There wasn't a lot to the role I felt like. Whereas this one, he did a he became a character. Yes, he became somebody unlike him completely. Yeah. So I was like, oh man, okay. Well, Moneyball, you got the nomination, and some people were impressed. Now I'm impressed. Yeah. Now I'm like, okay, now you kind of have my attention. Yeah, and uh, I think he did a good job also of making the main character more likable because yeah. he was even more, like, the, he had those great moments of you where you want to just reach into the screen and stop the person from doing the clearly <laughs> yeah. dumb thing. Yeah, totally uh, And he nailed those scenes. Or... Uh, so Scorsese, <laughs> here's the thing. <laughs> it's weird like when it comes to like favorite directors this is the thinking part of movie yeah, things isn't it movie things I everyone has their favorite directors it's yeah. hard when you put up people like Spielberg and Scorsese against each other right or like Stanley Kubrick because everyone has their s- specific style yeah um, are you more into the kind of director like Scorsese who's more realistic dark gritty or are you more into something like the Spielberg who's literally I want to say family entertainment because he's done movies like Sam Part Ryan and stuff yeah. But, like, whose filmography, if I had a, a Schmo's choice, which I yeah. usually do, the Spielberg category, or would you take the Scorsese category? Uh, Scorsese. You take I Scorsese. So always... you're dropping E.T., you're dropping Raiders of the Lost Ark, and you're going more for the Goodfellas casino. Yeah, I mean, if you're talking about, like, literally annihilating those films, that might be a different <laughs> no, no, yeah. a different discussion. <laughs> uh, yeah. But in general, I like these school of filmmakers that are going to get a little bit to the darkness and I, I do think Spielberg does that but I, yeah. I agree with you that like uh, if you just say Spielberg and Scorsese on the streets and played like a word association games mm-hmm. for Spielberg you'd get like <laughs> heartwarming yeah you'd get like Fun, guess, moving you'd way. get like awe sweeping <laughs> sweeping yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah and for Spielberg sure. you'd get like or Scorsese or, yeah, for like, Skil- Scorsese you get like yeah streets <laughs> yeah 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 mobs yeah death you know yeah it's just cocaine for sure uh but but even that i mean like uh i really love uh, i'm a comedian i love comedy but i like comedy that is dark Mm -hmm. and real and that it is really a catharsis at laughing at something true about the human condition which is why i love dark comedies because we're enjoying watching these horrible people have this in this buffoonish situation because outside of them we can see how stupid it is to want Nothing but <laughs> cocaine and hookers because yep. all it's doing is giving them diseases yeah. and life problems, and it, and they look and they're so out of control and they look so stupid and I love that kind of I love that darkness mm-hmm. that grounds things and makes them real. Um, and Spielberg does that sometimes, but I'm yeah. much more in the camp of people who want to show us uh, darkness in human truth in a way yeah. that's like and you're still like I ate popcorn for three hours and that was great well I saw the absolute depths of the human soul it's funny when Scorsese says he kind of does something like that's more Spielberg-y mm-hmm. <laughs> like Hugo do, did you see Hugo? I did not see Hugo Hugo's a because movie because it, like, it wasn't yeah, particularly excited it about was, it if you told me Spielberg directed it I would have been like it right. totally feels like a Spielberg film right and uh, like moving hearten so Scorsese can't do it but it feels a little different when he does it it's like Oh, this is feels like a Spielberg film, but it's not. And then when he does stuff like King of the Comedy, even though it's a comedy, it definitely has a dark, a dark comedy undertones, yeah. undertones to it. Yeah, and he did an art film. But this is one I have not seen. After Hours. Yeah, I have never seen. Okay, After see, Hours, that's one a lot of people bring up. That is another comedy about one guy, one night in New York, and uh, I can't really talk much about it. But a lot of people speak highly of it. Yeah. But again, very from what I'm here, told, very dark tones to it, and very. I don't know. Very, uh, the word that comes up most is raw. Yeah. Raw and like Raging Bull, like you really get into the human spirit, to the dark, almost to the dark area of yeah. the human spirit. And uh, I think that's what makes Chris such a great director. He's one of the few directors that get really tap into that. Yeah. Just like how Spielberg could, does a better job at tapping into the more 
mystical and heartwarming kind yeah, of Yeah, and the hope for humanity, yeah. which I love. I love Spielberg, and I love that that ability. Mm-hmm. It also seems for me, for from Spielberg, it seems like ability. Like, mm-hmm. he wants that moment. He knows how to get it. Mm-hmm. And for Scorsese, I just feel like I'm watching another human's DNA. Yes. Like, it feels it. like it's it's just a part of him. And there's no other way to do it that makes sense to him than the way he did it. I totally agree. And I love auteur directors like that. Yeah. And then you got somebody like Kubrick who's just off the wall. Yeah, just like. <laughs> yeah. You do a whole class just trying to break down what he is. It's a little more complex. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I really hope Scorsese, you know, every time that guy makes a movie, I'm going to be there. And I'm really curious to see what's like his next film. And he's been talking about doing getting back with like De Niro and Pesci about this gangster film. Oh, that would be about amazing. That would be amazing to I, sort of put a cap yes, on that, that right? career and that story. Only because I think if anyone's going to bring De Niro back to the old De Niro, it's Scorsese. Yeah. He's the one who made the old De Niro, really. Yeah. So I would love to see that happen. I don't remember what the name of the movie is. It's been rumored for years. I think, actually, they just announced Scorsese's doing our film with Leo yet, like a week ago. Oh, wow. And it's a... Uh, it's a, I think it's a thriller, actually. They just announced it last... No, no, it's about serial killer. Oh, hey, yes. that'd be great. Yeah, I'd love to see them in it's it. Called, like, seven-type movie? It's called White Something Something. I can't remember, but it takes place in the old days. It's about, like, one of the first serial killers. Scorsese directing and Leo starring. Oh, wow. Leo yeah. DiCaprio is a serial killer? It fascinates Perfect me. Perfect casting. I yeah. mean, I can't wait to see how he's going to tackle that. Because I don't think we've ever seen him in that kind of mindset. Yeah, Django, he's a despicable human being. Yeah. And he's kind of just a disgusting human being. But have we ever seen Leo? I mean, in Shutter Island, he plays somebody with psychological problems. Yeah. But I'm talking about straight up. Can you picture Leo as a serial killer? Yeah, yes, I like, can. And it, it makes me really, really happy because I think a lot of our serial killers have gone down this sort of blue eyes, lazy, lazy road where we've, we've figured out like a sort of stand in for. Serial killer is that yeah. they smile and they're polite, but they're a little creepy. And I'm just kind of sick of that. Yeah, that take on villains. Or you know, the serial in killer in a movie is like that's a serial killer. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're just, right. You're just like, he, oh yeah, yeah. The, the creepy guy at the post yeah. office. Yeah, I think he's killer. the serial killer. So I, see, I think Leo would be able to bring depth to it and you know play a serial killer like yeah. serial killers really are. Where like they don't you know leer at the camera to let you know they're a serial killer. And he's gonna be one of those guys who's like. He's probably going to play like a good looking Good looking guy, guy got who, everything going, and suddenly just cut somebody. Guy. Yeah. Ugh. So that movie is literally on the top of my most anticipated, even though it hasn't even started filming yet. Yeah. Scorsese, him together again, serial killer. I think maybe DiCaprio will finally get an Oscar. Who yeah, knows? Yeah, that, oh, that would be great. But hey, he might get one this year because he's doing a film with uh, Inaratu, the guy who did Birdman. Oh, wow. And it's called uh, the. Oh, God. People are going to kill me because I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember the name of this movie. It's the Re- Revelant? Revelant? Okay. People, pe- I'm Relevant? Already, the tweets that I'm getting in real time right now. <laughs> <laughs> Not now while recording, but the, all of you are yelling at me. The Revenant. The Revenant. Revenant. There it goes. The Revenant with Tom Hardy. Oh, that, that's intriguing. That's going to be. He apparently shot it all with natural light. And it's gone, oh, wow. it's gone like six months over shooting schedule so i think he's going for another oscar and i think from the trailer that i've seen yeah leo is like full-on grizzly man beard and everything oh cool cool it's gonna be insane all right so that was a great discussion i love the fact that you brought up wolf wall street it's one of my all-time favorite movies awesome. um especially for scorsese and leo but let's get to the quick thinks this is where we are basically gonna talk about movies i tweeted out hey tell me the last movie you watched and people tweet me. A lot of you tweet me. So awesome. I apologize <laughs> if uh, I didn't get to your guys' uh, tweets, but there's so many of them. But let me load them up here, and we'll go. Let's go. Chris Alex Akos <laughs> at Kalis Akos. <laughs> God. Uh, Butch Cassidy and Sunny's Kid. Uh, I have never seen Butch. Guess what? Yeah, have you? I've never seen either. Wow! And a lot of people are probably going to crucify me for this. Yeah, you know, at a certain point, you just got to be like, yeah. I got to accept who I am. I, you know, there it's there those, is a price yeah. for watching Star Wars <laughs> 172 times in your life. Good point. I mean, sometimes you don't get to some of the classics. Uh, that, you know, all of the best of clips I've ever seen, Yeah, it's great. Well, yeah, uh, you yeah, know, yeah it, obvi- it obviously was incredibly important to usher in uh, the kind of violence that made Scorsese po- possible to totally put agree. that kind of violence on the screen. This is this movie is on my you know wall of shame. Yeah, this is one. It's I wall have, of shame. There's no excuse why I haven't seen it. It's just one of those I've just never yep. owned it. No one I've known has owned it, and I just never caught it on TV. Yeah. And here's the thing: when I do catch it on TV, I don't want to start a movie like that from the beginning. Or, no, that's a like you want to sit down yeah. and you want to watch that. Yeah, I don't want to you know, catch it on TV with commercials. 
That's one of those movies, like, hopefully in L.A. they do a lot of screenings here. Yeah. I would love if it, for them to do a screening of Butch yeah. Cassidy and just go see it in theater. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so we both swung out missed. Here's one of my favorites. It's an old film. Okay. So we'll see if you've seen this one. Mike Joyce at 11th Cub fan. He's a Cubs fan. Um, Casablanca. Oh, yes. I love seen Casablanca. I love Casablanca. Oh, yeah. Uh, I I had an on-again, off-again relationship uh, with a, a woman in high school. She okay. went to She went to college at a different college, and it was nice and romantic. She would send me letters, and then they had a screen in of Casablanca, and she sent me a letter that said Casablanca, big woo, sarcastically. And I was like, nah, this is over. Nope. <laughs> that was it? <laughs> oh, man. I love that movie. It's one of those... It's one of those movies that just holds up beautifully. Yeah. I mean, those you real you watch that movie, you know why Humphrey Bogart was a star. He is just oozes charisma. Right. It's I, just entirely charming and just kind so of a, amazing that that films used to be a, able to be about those kind of small little side a, pocket yeah. of history. Obviously, it's involved mm-hmm. in in huge huge world events. Such a simple story, but yeah. told so well. Yeah. Go show you, you don't need to have a s- script like The Usual Suspects <laughs> yeah. to be a great movie. It could be a simple movie, as long as you tell the story with great characters. And Yeah, I love that movie. I could talk about that all day. Um, <laughs> Iman Rafferty, at Iman Rafferty, Casino. Uh, yeah. Boom. I, I, Scorsese. I love it. The follow the everyone calls it the not-so-good Goodfellas. Yeah. It, it really is kind of like... Uh, it's not a sequel, but it's like the sister or brother too. I think film. it suffered from being amongst the explosion of crime films. Crime films, okay. In the in the wake of uh, Goodfellas and Pulp Fiction, where you know it was in that era where I think the studios were like, mm-hmm. just look at whatever the surface level is of the movie. Of like, yeah. oh, you like it when there's snappy banter and death and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I guns. That. So I think that it got a little bit I, caught up in that wave in terms of I people's still think it's a good impression movie. of it. I think the problem, the reason why I guess a Goodfellas comparison is because you bring back Pesci as this small, violent, mad guy. Yeah. Demiro you... is actually playing a much different character yeah. compared to his character in Goodfellas. I mean, his character in Goodfellas is not taking any shit, kind of tough guy. You know, this one, he's kind of like a more subdued, kind of, you know, trying to, he's basically trying to keep Pesci level headed. Yeah. Uh, but again, it has that energy. It has that energy Goodfellas and Wolf Wall Street has. And it's a very enjoyable watch for me. I don't think it's as good as Goodfellas, or I'd probably put it. I'd put it third in the trilogy. Okay. <laughs> I would go Goodfellas, Wolf Wall Street, yeah. Casino. I haven't watched it in a long time. I want okay. to rewatch it. Rewatch it, because even though I say that, the, I'm not trying to say that as a bad thing. I still think it's a great movie. Yeah. Um, Andres Schleid May. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> yeah, uh, Andres May. <laughs> Labyrinth. Booyah, Boom. David Bowie. How many hundred times have you seen this movie? I just saw Labyrinth. For the for first the time? first time. No. At the, uh, the New Beverly? Egyptian. Oh, Egyptian Theater. Egyptian okay. Theater. Love that theater. With about 700 people. That's amazing. And a uh, pre-talk uh, from Henson's son, Brian. Brian Henson. Why right? was I not told of this screening? I, I would have been here in a heartbeat. I know. It was great. So it was... So how, now, this is interesting. As somebody who never... I grew up with Labyrinth. Right. As somebody who did grow up with it, coming in with adult, fresh eyes. Yes. What was your takeaway? Uh, it was... I really, really enjoyed it. Okay. All I of the like cultural... No, 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 no. <laughs> it's, it, it was impossible to see as a movie. Okay. Because I, it was seeing the cultural touch points of people like literally a year younger than me. Because okay. I was all about Dark Crystal. Oh, I really? had everything. See? I was not a big Dark Crystal fan. Uh, but I loved it. And then yeah. I was I was getting a little bit older. And then I was sort of like, why is David... Why is there a man with heavy metal hair doing a movie with my Muppets that I like? And yeah, I, yeah. it just... It never grabbed me. Okay. And then it got to the point of huge cultural touchstones. And honestly, one of the biggest just sort of touch points of David Bowie is how many of my uh, female friends or male gay friends would tell me that his... Bowie's penis <laughs> yeah. is a coming-of-age <laughs> moment in that movie. And the sound that went through that theater of 700 people when you get the first shot of his, his huge, <laughs> huge package, yeah. just no apologies. Okay. It was like, ah, 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 ah. It was just like people were... That's what was going on in the audience. <laughs> elated and frightened at the same time. Okay, gotcha. Uh, I just like to put my puppets. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, like, there, so yeah, there, for yeah. me, it was very weird to see as an adult knowing it has this yeah. sort of like, oh, it's meant as this sort of dark fable. Oh, definitely. You know, and yeah. I like the dark fable. I like the weird darkness of so it. So you like the movie? Dark, I love the movie. Okay. Yeah, I love that's the bottom line. I'm sorry, quick thinks part of it. <laughs> I love the movie. I love the fact a dog is riding a dog. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's what it comes down to me. Uh, Sir Denimus in that movie is the shit. Yeah. That's an he is like he takes on people twice his size, three times his size, 
and he rides a dog. A dog riding a dog. Book closed. Yep. On to the next movie. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, Michael Rodriguez at that guy 1004 um, This is a good movie to bring up. Reservoir Dogs. Because I think out of all of, you know... Pesci's films, especially his first two. Yeah. Not Pesci, Tarantino. Yeah. Uh, those first two kind of have definitely a Tarantino, you know, it's definitely Tarantino. Yeah. You could see a little Scorsese influence there. Oh, absolutely. Especially Reservoir Dogs. It's his take Pesci. on it. Yeah. His yeah. take on the Scorsese world, I think. So, I I mean, I love Reservoir Dogs. I think a lot of people forget it. I don't say they forget it, but Pulp Fiction is usually the one you throw out there. Yeah, I mean, Go I think... Go back and watch Reservoir Dogs, people. It's, it's a great movie. It's I, amazing. I like it, but I, I do so prefer Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Because I'm a fan of the dark comedy, and I feel like they're swapped in their sort of dark amount of dark comedy versus sort of like uh, watching the almost a little the violent the level of violence mm-hmm. in there are parts of Reservoir Dogs that are a little bit of sort of uh, torture porn early torture totally porn was like yeah. watch that person suffer that's the point and it's really well done uh, but I enjoy watching Pulp Fiction more yeah I, I mean I agree I just think Reservoir Dogs as, there's some points I just think it's uh, it's almost better written at times especially because I feel like there's there's great dialogue in Pulp Fiction, too. That's hard to say that. Yeah. Reservoir Dogs. There's so many great scenes of Reservoir Dogs. I think they're great. I would... I don't even know what I'm trying to I say. I think Reservoir Dogs Watch broke the mold yes. for that kind of movie. Yeah. And then Pulp Fiction broke Perfected the mold it. for movies in general. Okay. Good where, point. Like, I like that. We'll end it there. <laughs> so I couldn't think of a... Where I was trying to think. But go watch Reservoir Dogs, people, because yes. I think it, it's, it's almost as good as Pulp Fiction, in my opinion. Um, Let's see. Let's go. Let's do one more here. Man, a lot. I'm, I'm, I've had like ten people say Captain America: The Winter Soldier. Oh, really? I'm not gonna say who said it because I've had like ten people. A lot of wow. people are watching right now. I like it. I like love it a lot. That, I love, love that, that movie. movie. Uh, yeah, love that movie. That's all we'll say about that. Um, <laughs> do you not love that movie? No, I do. Okay, good. Oh, good, here good. we go. Okay. Uh, I love Winter Soldiers. It might be my favorite of the Marvel films. <laughs> cool. Uh, Richie Vane at at Richie Vane, also known as just Richie. Uh, I'm, I think he's only saying this because I just watched this movie recently. New Jack City. You probably have never seen this. <laughs> oh, I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't run out to see New Jack City. <laughs> um, that, was, that was a choice. Richie, if you did watch it, I'm right there with you. I watched it just two days ago. I hadn't seen it in years. It's Ice-T, Judd Nelson. <laughs> um, who else is in that? Wesley Snipes. It's such, But you know what? Honestly, it really held up well. Okay. It's definitely an early 90s movie, Yeah. especially with the, the way they dress, the hairdos. <laughs> but it's a good gangster film. It actually holds up fairly well, better than I thought it was going to. Yeah. Uh, all right, we'll do one more that you've actually seen. Oh, here's a great one. Uh, one of my favorite horror slash comedy films by Chipper Beal at Chip at Beal Chipper. American Werewolf in London. I have never seen American Werewolf in London. God I know. Bless I'm sorry. America. I'm sorry. I'm a, <laughs> in I'm a monster. I'm a monster in London. <laughs> Listen, as a comedy fan, you should check out that. Movie. I will. Because it is a horror film, but it is just as much. Just as much a horror a comedy. I mean, awesome. Uh, so, I like Cabin in the Woods a lot. <laughs> Cabin in the Woods is great, yeah. Uh, John Landis. I love the fact that John Landis directed that movie, too, because you know him for comedy. Yeah. So, of course, he's going to have a funny horror movie. Uh, let's see. All right, let me try one you more. You got a lot to pick from. That's awesome. Dude, the fans are awesome. Uh, let's go. All right, here's a comedy I know you've seen. Uh, Richard Garcia at Richard Garcia. Dumb and Dumber. Not Dumb and Dumber 2. <laughs> Not Dumb and Dumber, the prequel. Ugh. You've seen Dumb and Dumber? Yeah. Okay. Wait, yeah. are you not a fan of the original Dumb and Dumber? No. The original Jim Carrey, Jeff Daniels, Dumb and Dumber. Yep. You're not a fan of that movie. It's fine. Oh Here, here's God. the thing. Here's the thing. I love comedy that has depth to it, that has ideas in it. So a movie like Dumb and Dumber, to me, is... It has I, no depth. I, I it, it's not. That. It's not that it doesn't have it's depth. Hilarious. I appreciate. I appreciate it for exactly what it's trying to do. It's trying to be big slapstick. Yeah. But it's sort of like a bad ambassador to comedy to people who are already unsure about comedy. Mm-hmm. It pisses me off when people see a movie like Dumb and Dumber mm-hmm. and then go, "Oh, well, comedy is just like diarrhea and falling down, right?" No. And it, it can makes be. It, it can be. <laughs> yeah. But it puts comedy. It helps to put comedy in this hole that comedy doesn't have ideas to it doesn't have it smart uh that's more that's more a criticism of the perception of dumb and dumber than okay. dumb and dumber yeah, itself say. but it makes it, yeah. it it has been a battle for of my <laughs> life my career my soul to take comedy seriously Listen, that I, movies like that there they can be okay. they can be difficult for me it's like i mean at I, this I, point I mean, studios won't put out a comedy movie without 
the diarrhea trailer <laughs> moment or the ball shot trailer moment. And I if understand. you te- keep teaching people that's what comedy is, that's a problem. But comedy isn't just one thing. No, it shouldn't be. Here's the thing. I always say, even though there's genres, there's genres within genres. Absolutely. Of absolutely. I love and Spinal Tap is maybe my favorite comedy. I love Spinal Tap. Love Spinal Tap. It's just a personal choice. Yeah. Because I think more than horror, action, drama, war films, westerns, comedy is the most subjective. I yeah, absolutely. Think. Absolutely. And for me, I understand going Dumb Dumber. It's not trying to be say anything with comedy. It's just trying to make you laugh. So that, so that's why I would put something like Spinal Tap over it, I guess, because it's a little it's smarter comedy. Yeah. And I totally understand that. Yeah. But I'll be damned if I don't laugh my ass off and I'm every time I watch that. Dumb and Dumber. And maybe I'll give it another chance. But I think there's also an age difference thing there. Like, you think I, lo- so? I love Jerry Lewis, you know? And okay. so, like, for me, it's like, hey, I used to watch Jerry Lewis. Movies mm-hmm. would come on, you know, the television on Saturday and Sunday. And I loved them when I was, like, you know, five, six years old. For, by the time Dumb and Dumber comes around it's jerry lewis for a new generation okay so part of me is like i already got this i mean when jim carrey's walking out of the bar and there's an old framed picture of like that we've landed on the moon he goes what no way <laughs> oh my god america Woo! And it's just it's well so you relating stupid. it made me laugh I, and i yeah. do i do like so stupid comedy yeah. sometimes it's just not my personal yeah. genre within a genre as you say I, I totally agree with you but when it comes to just stupid movies there's Airplane, which is a spoof, yep. which I love Airplane. I love Airplane, too. But Dumb and Dumber, for what it's trying to do, yeah. I think it hits it out of the park. Awesome. <laughs> you don't agree. I think it does. No, okay. I think it does. It's just gotcha. not for me. Totally understand. All right, guys. Well, that's pretty much going to do it for our show. Sorry if I didn't get to any of your tweets. Uh, keep tweeting me next time. I will get to them. Uh, I try to scan through and try to find something that kind of related. That's why I went with the Reservoir Dogs Casino. Absolutely. Uh, but thanks, everybody, for tweeting in. Yeah, thank you, guys. Um, you can follow me at JTE. You can check out the show on iTunes. Do me a favor. You know, write a comment. Tell me you liked what you liked, what you didn't like. And uh, if you think we gave you a five-star podcast, go ahead and give us a yeah, five-star absolutely. rating. absolutely. I think we did. Uh, <laughs> Joseph, do me a favor. Tell them where they can catch you. Uh, you can find me on all the social medias at Joseph Scrimshaw, exactly as it okay, sounds, S C R I M S H A W. And my website is josephscrimshaw.com. And my personal podcast is uh, Obsessed Podcast on Feral Audio, where I talk to people about what they're obsessed with. Awesome. Yeah. I will be on there talking about Rocky very soon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk. I yeah. would like that. <laughs> um, so that's it, guys. Do me one favor. I need one favor from all the listeners. Next time you're in a Target, Home Depot or Lowe's. <laughs> Walk up to one of the workers and say, where can I find a scrim shop? <laughs> and let me know if they actually try to figure it out. Or if they go, what the hell is a scrim shop? That would be amazing. I want to know that too. <laughs> I think I mean, tweet us, tweet at us, guys. All right, thanks so much, and uh, keep watching those moves.